Nathan, welcome back, brother. Hi, Johnny. Thanks for having me back. Always a treat. I know, man. I'm loving this. Like, you know, having you on consistently every week, you know, we get to expand our minds and yeah. uh, episode three of five of this series. But, you've, you know, you've it, lost it, yourself 100 listeners. Oh, God, no. <laughs> I, I swear, my voice on you. I, look, I'm, I'm low key concerned that if you ever leave this podcast, for whatever reason, I'm going to lose about 80% of my listeners because of your charismatic oh. <laughs> tones. Oh, thank you. <laughs> and most of our YouTube as well, because like, I'm sure they all just consistently come to YouTube to see that beard of yours, you know? To see the beard, despite yeah. it being trimmed recently. Yeah, I yeah. think Ragnar Lothbrook would envy that beard, to be honest. <laughs> yeah, but I, I can't go and raid villages, so, you know, it's, <laughs> it swings around about. It is somewhat rough frowned upon in the 21st century to raid exactly, villages. Yeah. Yeah. We're getting just, a bit upset about it. Just, just a little. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Uh, we'll get stuck into today's topic. So as I've already said, see, uh, episode three of the series of Coming Into Your Own, and today we'll be tackling confidence. And to summarize how this comes into play with the previous two episodes, we talked about unconditional love for yourself. That's the foundation. Yeah. Uh, with unconditional love, you build upon and you get um, self-respect. With self-respect, yeah. Again, that's just another layer to protect you from everything the world will throw at you. And do check out those episodes because they will make a lot more sense with yes. the contextualization of what we're going to talk about today. Mm. But with self-respect comes naturally, I believe, confidence. And I'm going to elaborate upon what my own personal take on confidence is and you know how my own confidence has evolved over the decade really and also i'd love to get your perspective on your own take on confidence yeah and I'm, i yeah. feel like we can also be vulnerable with our listeners and maybe talk about things we're not confident with but perhaps mm. our own because we'll be talking about the actionable steps you can take at mm. the end of the episode uh, to build and sustain your confidence but yeah i feel it's really important to start off with what I think confidence is and you can give your own term as well I'd love to hear that for me confidence without looking at a dictionary it's having that self-belief in yourself to tackle a certain thing in life or a certain skill that either gives you fear or perhaps a little bit of anxiety something you're you feel incompetent in um you may look the amateur uh and something that could have potential social consequences and i make that sound a lot worse than it is but for example let's say it's the first time you're ever asking out a girl and it's kind of like there's the social consequence of mm. her rejecting you and you feeling terrible like you're not enough yada yada but then this is where self-respect comes in and the unconditional love because you know you know your worth and you know you can yeah. try again there's no big deal yeah. in in short that's what i think confidence is it's that ability to tackle your fears and I, 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 we are going to talk about courage next week. And the mm. two bounce off each other, and we will reference them in this episode. But yeah, yeah. I do believe courage and confidence can be separated distinctly, but they yeah. do work hand in hand. But that's just my own quick take. What, what's your take on confidence, Nathan? Yeah, I think I, it's interesting what you say there, because I think it's difficult to talk about confidence without sounding like you're talking about courage. Yes. Um, and... You know, and I think that is, I think it's right that you split them because I think that confidence does lead into courageous behavior, doesn't it? Um, and I think, but then there's, you know, you've got self confidence, which I think you, you know, in the right person and used well, mm. um, you know, that there's, there's like gravitas and, um, you know, and, and, and leadership comes out of confidence, doesn't it? You know, mm. um, you're more likely to want to follow a confident leader um even if maybe they don't appear to be competent but uh but are sure that they they will achieve you know you'll, you'll follow yeah we all know someone like that though don't we isn't that the dunning kruger effect like in a way it's someone who's supremely confident in their ability but they're totally and woefully incompetent <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I, I wouldn't name any names, but you know, yeah, you, neither you, will I. <laughs> you, you know, in in your current profession and my previous one, yeah, that we, we've encountered more than our fair share of 
of that type of human. Um, <laughs> and so, you know, and, and so, but then, you know, within well-used self-confidence can create group confidence as well. Mm. Um, and I think, so when we, when we're looking at this, you know, these subjects where you, um, you love yourself, but not in a weird preening, um, you know, Narcissistic everyone look way. at me kind of way. Yeah. Um, and then, and then you respect yourself. I think from that, I mean, that's got to be a breeding ground for confidence, hasn't it? In a good way. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, I, I, I can't see you, you know, because if you're not confident, then are you really respecting yourself? If you're not confident, are you really loving yourself whilst being fully aware of your flaws, mm-hmm. you know, and, and fully aware of, of the fact that you, you are, you have the capacity to mess up, but actually that that's okay because it's a learning process. A hundred percent. And, 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 and I think sort of like, although those two kind of lead into confidence, the way they flow, I think it's, it's important not to think of it in terms of that kind of like, it's not, it's not like a, um, it's not a series circuit. It's a parallel circuit. Yeah. Yeah. So, you know, the, 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 the power, the power source is you. Um, but you are, if you like lighting up <laughs> these lamps at the same time, yeah. not one after another, Yeah, 100%. Um, you know, uh, to get all nerdy and, very yeah. basic for, engineering for it be actually it's very good for people go and look up what a series and a, a parallel circuit looks like and that that analogy will make perfect sense and also you'll learn a little bit about electricity which i really like Ooh, yes uh, although i think i think it's really important nathan to discuss building organic confidence rather yeah. than this fake it till you make it because while in the short term perhaps you look you'll come across as really confident in a presentation a speech a date pick whatever avenue of life you want to apply fake it till you make it to but that's not sustainable and you you will be found out and then you're just going to fall flat in your face and the people you initially impressed with the said fake confidence are simply going to go right well you're a bit disingenuous so you know what you're clearly not confident so i can't trust you i place trust in you and now i don't have that trust is broken so now you're in a much worse place i feel like it's much better to come across as confident with room to grow and then people can watch your confidence naturally Mm -hmm. grow like for example i'm in a position of of junior management and when i first became in when i first uh, met the challenges that came with being a junior manager totally out of my depth and i'm happy to say i was not confident do it i didn't even know what i was doing i got i got told right here's your promotion and yeah. go and manage people and you know i had to try and manage I, I you know some days i struggled to manage myself let alone these other complex human beings with dreams yeah. ambitions you know uh they've got good days and bad days but we've all still got to get a job done and mm. you have to i think realize that while there's a lot of people on the internet who have really good intentions who want to help not all knowledge and advice is equal it's like true this is yeah because at the same because some people will will preach you know fake it till you make it and they'll they will that's the hill they will die on and i that's you know exactly and i'm not i am not going to subscribe to that philosophy i would much rather I would much rather people see me as, okay, if on a scale of one to 10, your confidence is six, but over the course of this time and completing this task, you now, your confidence is nine, eight. People, I think, will respond to that better because suddenly they will go, well, actually, I only felt, conf- when I was doing this task, I only felt maybe four on the confidence scale. But yeah. because because the guy I'm following has shown that he's willing to swallow his ego and grow as a leader and grow naturally mm-hmm. in confidence, well, if he can do it or she can do it, then so can I. Yeah. So, yeah. you know, I, yeah. I think organic confidence is the way forward, but what do you think, Nathan? Yeah. yeah. I think it's interesting, isn't it? Cause there is that kind of, um, I mean, life does that to you, doesn't it? So if you like, you know, um, if you think when you're in the, the school system or the education system, you know, you've been led by a teacher um, or a lecturer and, and the ones you enjoy learning from are the ones who are confident yes um you know i i remember the reason why i like history so much is because my secondary school history teacher um 
she loved her subject and, and conveyed it with confidence. Mm, um, yeah. And, and that was much more, and she made it exciting. Um, whereas my, during my GCSE years, so um, the, the maths teacher I should have had wasn't there. And we had a series of supply teachers through the two years. Yeah. And, you know, understandably, my ability to math is almost non-existent. Same you know, I'm like, oh, I, need, I need a calculator to do a basic thing. <laughs> um, <laughs> and I have limited confidence in, in maths. But ask me a question about the Roman Empire. Love it. <laughs> ask me a question about the Norman Conquest of Britain. I'm all, you know, do you know what I mean? Ask me, I'm, I'm on it. I'll, I'm all over it um, because of that confidence. Yeah. Um, and so I think, yeah, you're right. And, and then when you move into from education, you move into the workplace um, and you, you know, like, unless of course you're really exceptional, even if you go in at a degree level, you're still kind of starting off at the bottom of somebody's pile. Yeah. Um, you know, and you, and you, you do things and you, you learn and, and it's kind of like, oh, I, I now know how to do that task. You're then confident in it. Um, and, and so now you can do that task, but now you can also do something new. Yes. And you start adding to the things you're doing and, you, and that confidence, it is organic, it does grow. Um, and like you're saying, you know, you, you're in now this, you know, the, this managerial role of types of a sort where you're responsible for other people. Um, and I remember the first time I was in that kind of situation and then something was going on and I was like, oh, someone needs to do something. There was a particular thing going on and I was realizing, oh, it's me. <laughs> I'm the person who's supposed to do something about this. And, 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 and yeah, and it is quite like, oh, oh, hold on a minute. But you step in and you do. Yeah. And, you know, even if it's only like 70% effective, you've done something. Exactly. And so the next time you have to do it, you kind of go, well, all right, I know I can do this. And it's kind of, and it hit, you know, it is, um, it's not swallowing down the fear, I don't think. I think it's just oh, to, almost to a certain degree ignoring it, going, yeah, okay, I'm a little bit nervous. My hand is twitching whilst I'm saying this, but I'm just going to do it. I'm just going to say it. Yeah. Um, and eventually what happens is that the fear monster just gets a bit smaller. Yeah. And, yeah. And that you know you or your confidence gets a bit bigger, you know, and a hundred a hundred percent. And I feel like as well that what you said there about ignoring the fear, it comes I was actually reading up about, you know, getting over fears and and you know, just trying to get prepared for this episode and research and not even research, but something that came to my own mind is that especially when I'm afraid of something, I definitely overthink it. And, oh, yeah. you know, that's probably from an evolutionary point of view. Our brains are hardwired to see the negative in a situation. Is this a survival threat? Is this, yeah. you know, going to ostracize me from the group? So on and so forth. Yeah. But I feel like a lot of the times that I've conquered fears or at least succeeded in at least tackling them yeah. was to not think, not think about it as such, but to think about it less. So instead of... So instead of going over the what ifs could go wrong and all this kind of thing, it's like, just do it. Think, mm -hmm. just get stuck in and do it and think about it later. Now, exercise good common sense here, folks. This We're talking about fear and the rationale side of things of you are not a good good public speaker. You're overthinking yeah. things. Get stuck in there. Make a public presentation. Yeah, don't and go then, punching rock violence. That's yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> Don't be doing something weird and daft. We're not we're not condoning <laughs> that behavior whatsoever. So, yeah, if, if for example, that's a that's a very common fear, a fear of public speaking. Oh yeah, yeah. Natural. Now I, I'm lucky enough that I don't have a I I don't have a fear of public speaking in the regard that I'd be paralyzed by it. If someone gave me notes and said, "Right, you're giving a presentation in five minutes," it's not going to be very good. But I but I can confidently spew nonsense. <laughs> and then and then you conduct an after action review don't you and you go what went well what didn't go well how am i going to change this so next time it does go yeah, well yeah. um yeah so in that regard instead of sitting there dwelling on your own thoughts and dwelling on this that, and the other and thinking what could go wrong just do it and the crack on with it accept the it's not going to be perfect. It's like, as my good friend, John Bo said in our previous episode of, uh, you know, starting a successful business, do not let perfect be the enemy of good. 
Yeah. You are not going, you are never going to have a perfect first date. You are never going to make the perfect presentation. You are never going to be the perfect employee or leader or whatever. So give yourself that freedom and liberty to experiment, to, to fail forward in that regard. Yeah. So, yeah. you know, instead of being a slave to your fear, accept that it's there, accept that it's never going to go away, accept that there's no magic pill, no guru who's going to get rid of your fear. Mm-hmm. Um, I hate to break it to you, but it's here to stay. You're always going to have some level of fear yeah. in whatever activity it is you are trying to do. And you just need to realize that you are not defined by that fear and that you are perfectly capable of overcoming it. Because if you, the way I always like to look at it as well is, and this is something a therapist said to me once was, you know, if your best friend was in this scenario, what would you say? So I would come up with all the excuses of, for example, let's say I did have a fear of public speaking, or I'd be afraid yeah. of being, I would, I would be afraid of being looking a fool. And then, okay, well, what would you say to your best friend if he said that to you? And it's like, well, nobody's going to think you're a fool. They're going to think, well, fair play for getting out there and having the minerals to do it. Oh, well, what if yeah. I, what if I like completely mess up the presentation? Well, that's okay then. Art, Ar- did you die? Is the world going to end? Do you know what I mean? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you know, uh, it's 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 rationalize the fear. Now, this is this is where I'm yeah. gonna go switch opposites and say Ooh. whatever what it is, whatever works for you. I have found both of yeah. these have worked depending on the context. Sometimes it's okay. don't overthink it, just get stuck in. Uh a bit in fact, perfect mm-hmm. analogy for don't for don't think about it and get stuck in rugby game. First time I played rugby and I had someone charging down me at the field, it was don't overthink this, just fucking tackle him <laughs> and then run the old yeah, thing. Yeah, yeah. It works. But yeah. to flip that on it, but to flip that on its head, something the Stoics <laughs> like to say, and this is something I'm researching still, is really sit down and rationalize the fear. Like really sit down. Why are you afraid of this? And really mm. and like even write it down. Like, what is the worst case scenario in this situation? Like, yeah. is there, is there real consequences or is it your ego? Yeah. You know, it's, it's, yeah. it's just, it's, it's, the, it's whatever works for you, but you know, what's, what, what's your take on that, Nathan? Yeah, no, I, I think that's a really interesting because it's like, um, not overthinking the moment or the situation, mm. but, but actually spending time thinking about what it is that makes you fearful. Mm. And I think, I think actually, if we're honest, in a lot of those circumstances, whether it is that public speaking, um, taking charge of something at work, um, like you say, asking that person out on a date or whatever, um, all those things, what it is we're actually really fearful of is our own ego. A hundred percent. And yeah. or how we, we are perceived um, rather than the actual activity or event itself. Um, and I mean, I, I, I'm I'm very guilty of overthinking things and have to on regular regular occasions tell myself to stop. Yeah. <laughs> stop. Yeah. Um, but actually I think what you said there about that 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 confronting the thing that I'm fearful of and thinking about that in how to deal with it rather than thinking about the situation and overthinking that, I think that's a really valuable um, piece of instruction. I'd not I'd not considered it from that viewpoint before yeah um and i think you know there's yeah i think there's a there's tremendous merit in that because if if i'm honest um you know what i'm what i'm more fearful of is is how you know nathan senior plc is (laughs) is perceived by other people you know yeah Um, rather than you know the actual activity yeah um you know, like you were saying with like the public speaking, um, you know, I, I've been asked to preach a couple of times at my local church. And for me, the the, the biggest fear is that I'll accidentally curse. You know, <laughs> that I'll, that I'll accidentally drop a swear word in, 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 in the middle of a sermon. Um, and, I, and I, you know, and I, I sort of disclosed this to a couple of my um, the young lads at church who I'm mentoring. Mm. And I sort of said this, and then I was preaching. And one of them said, there was a minute, there was just a slight second where I thought you were going to drop a kiss with me. <laughs> and I was like, 
I know exactly which second you're talking about. <laughs> I could feel it building because I was getting passionate and excited and I knew that I was about to say something and I had to rein it in all of a sudden. And stop. I was like, the last thing I'm going to do is drop a clanger right now, you know, um, because you'll I was give, just being... Yeah, you give Dorothy in the front row a, a heart attack. Exactly, yeah. <laughs> but I was just a bit caught up in the moment. I was just passionate and, yeah. you know, that the words were coming out unchecked, if you like, but that was, yeah. you know. Um, but I think there it's like, again... I, the first time I ever had to to do that kind of thing, I I was just I was a shambling wreck, you know, and rubbish, absolutely rubbish, and you know, um, but again, sometimes some of these things, you just get better by doing it again, and by doing it again, yeah. um, and and it requires, you know, if if we're all sort of because one of the things that you know you're, you're trying to do with this podcast is as well as pass on information and tools for life, but it's also to grow a, a, a community, a culture. Mm. But if, if all of us curious Ulster folk just gave each other a bit of grace to yes. allow us to allow the other person to mess up. A hundred percent. And then, and then in that, like you're saying, you know, you can after action yourself, but also to be after actioned by your peers and to be told this is where you were good, this is where you went wrong, um, you also grow in confidence. Now, it doesn't mean if you're asking a girl out on a date that you take two of your pals with you. To, <laughs> you know, like, cause that, cause that, that's the next level weird. But, but, that, that's, but in, that, that is the in-betweeners if I ever thought. Oh, it. yeah, yeah. I mean, yes, exactly. Yeah, yeah. But that kind of, that idea of, of just, in, in, just in things in general, even if it is in, in your, you know, your education setting or your workplace or whatever, um, after a certain thing, asking one of your colleagues or one of your, you know, how did you think that went? Mm. And having the courage to ask that question, having the courage to hear what they've got to say. That's very important. Yeah. But also if you're the person receiving that, how did you think that went? Having the courage to say, this is how I think it went, <laughs> but being constructive, not destructive. hundred um, percent. You know, and so it's, you know, but all those things again, come from practice from doing it, you know, it, I think some people are born, like we say, you know, natural leaders. Um, some people are born with, you know, you, you meet those annoying people and they're always handsome as well. Aren't they? They're always good looking. Um, you know, these people who are confident, you know, they, they, they never look like a bulldog licking piss off a thistle. Do they? Do you know what I mean? like they're, all, they're always handsome. And, and, it, and it's really not fair. You know, you go, come on. Why, why do they get all the cards? Um, but like, you know, but for those of us who have to work on it, just that, that's what you've got to do because actually, like, you know, that that I think confidence comes from, you know, it's um, you know, wash, rinse, repeat, isn't it? You know, it's we need to just do it again, yeah, and be confident again and be confident again. And each time you, you know, you're a little bit more armored in a good way, not in a negative way. Um, because the next time, you know, you've generated a bit more of that self-respect. 100%. Because you know, oh, I can do this. Like um, when I was working for a supermarket chain um, before moving back up here, and the first time I confronted a shoplifter, yeah, um, you know, after they'd gone, I I had to go out the back because I was shaking. You know, I was shaking because I think I think it was adrenaline, but I was shaking. But then, like then after that, <laughs> once you've done it a few times, even when I wasn't on duty and it's say like i'd gone to a different shop and i saw someone shoplifted i just call it out oi there's a shoplifter I just point at them and yeah. shout at them till they left the shop because yeah. now i had confidence in it because i know that once you confront them they just run away yeah because they don't have any confidence that's why they're sneaking around with their hood up trying to oh, steal yeah. things yeah well um, said. you know and so you just confront it you get used to it um you know to the point where a couple of weeks ago when i'd gone into leeds with my sister and we'd gone into a, one of the little one of the little Tesco's or it was in town. And yeah. this bloke walked in and my sister's like, what are you doing? I was like, that guy's shoplifting. <laughs> 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 Pointed him out straight away. You know, because you just pick up on it. But like, you know, you got the confidence of of confronting that. Um, because I know that most of them just run as soon as oh, they're yeah. confronted. Yeah. Um, now, I'm not saying that everyone should go do that because some people get violent and go mental. So don't necessarily do that all the time. But it's one of those things because I'd done it that many times. Yeah. I was now confident in the fact that I could 
shout at that person. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I, I can imagine Nathan shouting. It's a scary thought, to be honest. <laughs> that is not the jolly Viking I recognize. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> uh, you said a lot of really good stuff there. Um, but something I want to challenge you on, actually, Ooh. is something you said um, in a good way. Uh, because I feel like we have that friendship that I can challenge you. And, stuff. and this is going to be hypocritical coming from a non-Christian. But at the same time... When you said when you when you were talking about uh you know the first time you were going to give uh, a a sermon um yeah you know you were you know you were um scared you were going to say drop an f bomb or or <laughs> scared scared about you know saying anything uh, wrong or whatever yeah uh, or in any other scenario like that and you said it was rightfully to do with ego would you say then that when you in particular are facing a lack of confidence or courage or whatever it is that you're letting ego getting in the way of what you're, of what God thinks of you. So God sees you as this, this, um, as this awesome individual and affords you the grace to screw up and affords you the love to, to practice confidence. But then when you think, Oh well, I'm I'm not good enough to preach, or I'm not, you know, I'm not confident to do this, this, that, or the other. Pick whatever fear it is. Mm. It's like, well, actually, are you making technically your God's love subservient to that? Oh, you. I mean, is that is that wow, just look at that? <laughs> I tell you, put those put those pistols away. Wow. Um, just yeah, just my yeah. That's that was that was the that was just I thought no, actually a, do you know that's an interesting thing to talk talk yeah, no, about, isn't that, it? That's great. I mean, that's a it's a really good call. I think we're like there, and I think you're you're absolutely right because it is that that's the problem is is where like my ego for that in in terms of what you're saying, you're absolutely right. My ego gets in the way of of my faith. Mm. because then i'm not i'm no longer because even even when you stand up to to do a, a teaching session in church you know like the there's a there's a um there's this thing called audience of one as though you're performing you're just giving whatever it is you're doing yeah to to god and it's like well you know blow everybody else that's fine but like and, and I know that's true, but but God isn't sat in the first three rows of, <laughs> of the thing scowling at me. You know, do you know what I mean? And 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 the, and the thing is, and, and this, is, this is, I'm now making excuses, okay, and feel free to to chop them down. But when I was actually doing these, because it's only just been recently that I've been doing like doing mm. some of the, the speaking at church, everyone's wearing a face mask. So oh all, yeah, all yeah. you see these eyes, and so I don't know, is that a happy? Are those happy eyes? Are those angry eyes? Are those bored eyes? You know, um, so and, and so you know, because you can't see the whole facial yeah, features. Yeah, yeah. Um, and so that's that's one of the that's a a, a contributing factor. But yeah. then it's also like you know the. Um, but then what, what was really nice was that, and and I think there was that that fear, and but I, I you know and I, and I and I did I did. I didn't, it didn't stop me from preaching. It didn't stop me from giving the sermon. Yeah. It was just something that I, I was very much aware of the fact that I had to be aware of where my hands were. So certainly the first time, because I was like, you know, <laughs> hands doing this. And I'm like, oh, where's this? And I also had to be aware, like I said, that I didn't want to accidentally curse whilst I was talking yeah, yeah. or any of those things. But actually, like, what was really nice was afterwards, someone who is, um, they, they themselves, they're not a, and they don't do preaching, but they're they've said they've been around for a long time. They've been there for a long time. They came up and were very complimentary about what I'd done and my style and yeah. things. And and I was like, oh, that's really you know, and that helped because I was like, you're someone I hold in very high regard, just generally. Yeah. And you've said this really nice thing about me, so thank you. I you know, I, I accept what you said about me. It's really nice. So the next time I stood up. And to do that, I just found where they were in the room yeah. and kind of spoke more in their direction, yeah. um, you know, and, and that sort of helped me a little bit more. Yeah, a hundred percent, man. But yeah, you're absolutely right. And I think, uh, and I think with, when all things, when we, when we're looking at it from a faith perspective, I think every time that as a human, we mess up is it's an ego related thing. Mm. I think, you know, whether that, yeah, and I'm sure that probably materializes into every avenue, not just in in a faith setting. But I think you know what you're talking about there yeah. is that yeah, I'm I'm allowing my ego to overshadow the good stuff that God has, 
um, in my life. And yeah, you, you know, although you did just both barrel me, you're absolutely accurate and correct. So yeah, guilty, it was, hands up. It know. was, if it makes it any easier, it's like drop my pistol and I, I, the end comes confetti, if you know what I mean. <laughs> no, it was good. It's good. But I mean, you know, like we've, we've got to be honest with no each point, other. Yeah, there's no point us two sitting here saying this if we're not going to practice yeah. it, you know. But and then think, confidence you know, as well, I think this is where confidence does come in because I have the confidence in our relationship as a friend and you as my mentor, as I see it to, to have those conversations. I think with confidence, it doesn't make uneasy conversations any easier, but it does allow you to have them in the first place Yeah. yeah. because otherwise they just sit and fester and metastasize yeah. into something much, much worse yeah. further down the line. And, and I think also the, the confidence, I like, you know, I have confidence in you. So knowing that the question you're going to ask isn't to belittle me or make me look rubbish, but it's actually to get to the heart of the matter. Yes. Yeah. And to, and, and to expose that to light, like yeah. you were saying. And I think there, if you, if you have, um, if you have confidence in yourself and confidence in your peers and your friends, mm. then you'll be, you'll be able to hear that for what it is rather than go, Oh, they're attacking me. You know, yeah. like I, I'm absolutely sickened with this thing of trigger warnings. Yeah. hundred um, percent. I've no time know, for it. Like, you know, I, okay. Something may upset you, but you know, I think it's going back to what you were saying, that stoic thing of like, well, why is it upsetting? Yeah. Rather than being triggered. What, what, why is it upsetting me? Yeah. You know? Yeah, exactly. Um, we are going to continue the conversation, but if at any point, you feel like you can double barrel me with some knowledge and truth bombs by, <laughs> by all means you can do that as well and in the order of that that classical classical british being a gentleman it's like the, the, you know you've got your jewel you've, you've got it yeah exactly <laughs> equal e, i'm giving you an equal chance to fire some good knowledge my way um but I, I, at the moment i can't honestly think of a fear that that you know it, it paralyzes me i'm thankfully not in that way i think um if i had to put a fear down on it i think sometimes i have a not a, i would say i would loosely define it as a fear of success because you know what if this podcast did blow up what if yeah. you know i did become mega successful um in some aspects some regard i don't know what that would be but you know, something the therapist in fair in season one said was, you know, new levels, new devils. And that's like, yeah, it's true. You know, mm -hmm. with every level of success, there is new obstacles to face, which will naturally challenge your confidence anyway. Yeah. And this is why I was saying, uh, or at least I hope I said this at the start of the podcast, that confidence is something you need to be doing consistently. Like mm -hmm. you can't be confident in one area for one day. It's easy to do that. But you need to practice confidence consistently every day, even if that's baby steps, because I think confidence is like any skill. You can have skill feared because if you don't regularly practice stuff that is slightly uncomfortable, you are not growing. And then 10 years down the line, you're going to ask yourself, well, what have I done with my life or what have I done here or what, mm. you know, I've got nothing to show for it. Well, of course you haven't because speaking facts to you, you haven't, you haven't manufactured the circumstances in your life that would help you grow. And you can sit there all you want and moan and complain. And it's some outside of our East problem that you're not where you want to be. Mm -hmm. And to a certain extent, you could admit that's potentially true. You know, there is corrupt organizations, corporations, all this kind of thing. But, mm -hmm. you know, if you want to really get that confidence that is going to allow you to achieve the life you want. You need to start taking personal responsibility yeah. and accept that unless you have some weird luck and a rich aunt passes away and gives you some stupid inheritance, you know, and that's you sorted the life you want, the satisfying, fulfilling, wholesome life you want is not going to land in your lap. You yeah. have to manufacture it and you manufacture that by confidently charging through the obstacles in your way, those obstacles are going to be scary. They're going to be uncomfortable, both physically and emotionally and potentially spiritually. But you could either choose to remain where you are in apathy and bitterness and resentment, or you can grow and it's going to be somewhat painful, but at the same time, you'll look back and go, 
yeah, it was worth it. Yeah. I saw a post on Instagram today, which really challenged me. And it was a good challenge. It was 10 years. I want to picture yourself 10 years from now. You're sat with either your wife, your partner, whoever, your kids are running around the garden. You've got your house. You've got the job you always wanted. You're living your best life. And you're going to think, you're going to look back in these 10 years and think, yeah, it was worth it. Because then you go, because then it removes the daily grind, the daily slog, and you're looking at the end goal. And the end goal is what we're obviously striving to achieve. Yeah. It's easy to take your eye off the ball with the daily slog, but in 10 years' time, if you think that's where I want to be, and that's truly what would make me happy, reverse engineer it to get to where you need to be. But to get to that, you're going to have to confidently tackle yeah. whatever's going to be in front of you. Yeah. So I think, I think also, like we, I mean, we're in danger of repeating ourselves, but I think it's worth repeating is the fact that it's, it's small steps, small journeys. Yeah. You're not, you're not going to get the, you know, shot of winning the lottery, which I suppose you could do. Um, you're not going to get all those things by waking up and wishing for it. A hundred percent. But, well but said. actually by going on a series of small journeys that each, each one unlocks the next journey. Yeah. You know, so if you, if you spend, three years not that there's anything wrong with this and i'm not dissing people who do it for their entire life but mm. if you sit, spend three years stocking shelves in in a supermarket because that's what you need to raise the money for the next bit and then you go into whatever and you know you just keep on unlocking yeah. those yeah. those stages of your journey um you know rather than rather than assuming that you know you know you know like today today Jewsbury, tomorrow the world that's you know like you've got to start it's today you know start where you're at and build and mm -hmm. and the thing is as well while you're doing this and something that you know you need to take charge of in terms of not letting it knock your confidence is there's always going to be someone who's either doing it before you do or is just better at it yeah you know um and that's just that's life it doesn't matter get on with it yeah. you know don't because otherwise what you're doing is you're using someone else's success as an excuse for you to fail Oh, dropping the truth bombs there, Nathan. But and and that's rubbish, isn't it? You know, it is rubbish. rubbish. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, like actually, what I would rather do is I'd rather use someone else's success to go. Okay, can I do? Can I do like that? You know, can I so, replicate this. You know, like, yeah, yeah. I mean, and I, I'm not saying this to to blow your ego up, but in terms of like you know your podcast, I'm I'm looking at what you're doing and going. Okay, I want to be as good as that. <laughs> Thank you with what much. I'm doing. And, and, and so that's what, you know, and so actually, you, you know, your, your style of having a second person in the episodes with you is I was like straight away. That's how I'm going to steal that. I'm going to do mm -hmm. that because I think, I just think that works. It bounces. It makes a lot of sense. Yeah. Um, you know, and there was a couple of other things that I was like, yeah, I'm definitely going to steal what Johnny's doing Yeah. <laughs> because actually he's, he's good. And so I, I want to be good as well. Um, and so rather than using what you're doing is going, oh, mine's going to be rubbish. I'm going, no, I'm just going to, you know, unashamedly steal it <laughs> and, and try and be as good whilst doing it. And that, it, and it's helped, you well, know, that's what it's, everyone it's does. Yeah, but but that, like, there's a, I, I heard, I don't know if there's any truth to the statement, but it's, it's like, there's nothing really original in the world. Everything is recycled because when you think about it, you know, the Romans had, you know, uh, ideas about art and things of that nature you know, the Babylonians probably since, since we have climbed out of the trees and walked upright, people have had original ideas and the generation after them have built upon those original ideas and ideas keep getting recycled and maybe, maybe new bits and pieces are added on to the original idea, but to, to truly come up with something brand new is incredibly difficult. And that's quite, it's a monster to try and achieve. So why not in an a authentic way, put your own spin on something. Yeah. You don't have to redesign the wheel in your life. And, uh, you know, if you've never done public speaking, you've never asked a girl out on a date or a boy on a date, whatever, uh, or you've done, you've never done it, this thing. Hundreds of people have done it before you, but they've done it their own unique way. So just put your own spin on it. Do you know what I mean? And something I think that is you know, very important to note is that there is no one size fits all. While confidence is this incredibly vague notion that everybody want, chases after and wants to have, you know, someone, you can have quiet confidence. You can have loud confidence. You can have, 
exuberant and ex, you know um, eccentric confidence. You can the confidence is confidence, but it's your confidence, and you've got yeah. to take ownership of it because. You know, there's people I've known who are not very confident in any social setting, but you start talking to them about computer science and suddenly they light up and suddenly they're the most confident person in the room because they are a subject matter expert and they will talk to you for days about yeah. their love, you know, the subject they love. Yeah. But, you know, I would say one thing I would say is just for one day, just one day, stop making excuses. What if you lived, what if you live tomorrow? without all the usual excuses you give yourself. If you see the excuse coming, bat it away and just charge through it and just live a day without excuses and let us know how you get on. Because I yeah. think that would be a very, and then, if it, and then if it works, I feel like confidence is like compound interest. You get a little bit and then it adds on and it multiplies yeah. and it multiplies. And then before you know it, people are asking, you know, how did you get so confident or what's your secret? Or, you know, I don't feel any confidence. Can you give me some tips? And then you're like, well, hold on a second. I'm still figuring it out myself, but other people see the confidence in you. Yeah, yeah. And this and it's is where, catchy, isn't it? Yeah, it catches. Yeah. Mm. yeah a hundred. Uh, yeah. It's contagious, isn't it? Yeah. Everybody yeah. wants to follow that confident person. Everybody looks at mm. confidence and says, I want that. And yeah. confidence plays a big part in the final episode of this series, you know, self actualization, where you truly become, you truly are your own person. You truly come into your own. And that's what people love. People love people who are truly authentic. There's only one of you in the world and you live it unapologetically. Yeah. And confidence is a big key in that. But yeah. I feel that it's some, again, it's a skill we're not taught, but it's something that we can all help each other achieve. Yeah. And I think something I forgot to say earlier was that was really important was when that, you know, that guy complimented you guys don't receive enough compliments we'd love the banter we loved ripping each other to bits because that's just how we show friendship and fellowship and yeah. that kind of thing but guys need compliments too girls yeah. are very good at this but guys need compliments like you give a guy a sincere compliment and he'll probably think about that for days that's gonna have him on a high for days mm. so do it like even say good like i say it to a lot of um you know guys in my team even if it's a menial job it was a shit job to do really unpleasant but they did it without complaining they just cracked on doing good job today good well job, done yeah. you know i don't know if that's well received i don't know if mm -hmm. whatever maybe they think finally someone's so someone's actually said good job for for you know no one's ever said that to me I don't yeah. know, but it's irrelevant because as a team leader, I'm always trying yeah, yeah. to be the best I can be yeah. and, and, and to be the best team leader I can be is to instill confidence in, instill confidence and encourage confidence in the people yeah. underneath me and to inspire confidence in the people above me that I'm good enough to do the job and, and yeah. to lead these people. So yeah. What, what yeah. do you think? No, I think it's good. I think it's, I think those things are, yeah, I think it's just, those things are vital and i do think we we need to stop with the excuses a hundred percent stop you making know, excuses and, and get on with it and sure you know the, the world's big and scary you know and we're gonna make mistakes mm. but don't use that as a as a reason to stay in bed you know mm. you in fact if anything use it as a reason to go out and conquer you know, Ooh. the world's big and scary. So use that as a reason to go out and conquer, you know. And I, and I don't mean that in a kind of planting your flag and look at my empire. I mean that <laughs> as in, like, I'm going to go and overcome this. Yeah. Whatever this thing is. What that was, I'm actually, you, you know, putting you on the spot here, Mr. Historian. But what was the mountains that Hannibal had to pass through to get to Rome? Oh, the Alps. The Alps, that was it. Yeah, yeah, you know, yeah. If you a Hannibal conquered the Alps to to get to Rome and, and achieve a stunning military victory, which is still talked about, you know, thousands of years later, you know, what is your Alp? What is your Alps? What is your Everest? What is your Kilimanjaro? What is the thing that is what's the single biggest obstacle that due to a lack of confidence you can't tackle at the minute? How are you going to conquer it? And you use the steps we've talked about either don't think about it and just charge into it. Please use, exercise good common sense <laughs> um, or rationalize it. Really sit down, write it down. I find journaling is so helpful, but rationalize the fear. Like really like how, get rid of this monkey brain idea that if you do this, you're going to die or you're going to get ostracized from the tribe or it's going to 
cause you extreme embarrassment. You know, uh, a quote I'm going to reference in the next episode on courage is from, I think it was the film We Bought a Zoo. You know, 20 seconds of insane, embarrassing courage, you know, it, it will all be worth it. Do you know, I think if you think about when we've grown the most, it's when we take, we've take we've been, the hands have shaken, the legs have shook, your stomach feels like it's fell out of your ass, but you just <laughs> went into it anyway. And next yeah. thing you know, it's all over. It was never as bad as you thought it was going to be. You mm-hmm. built, you, again, overthinking it, you, you, you built up this monster in your head, which actually just turned out to be nothing at all. You know, it's like as yeah. Seneca said, uh, one of the ancient Stoics, you know, we suffer more in imagination than we do in reality which is oh, yeah. so, so true. Um, yeah. But yeah, I think uh, unless uh, you have anything more to say, Nathan, I was going to start talking about the actionable steps. No, audience I, was just, I was just thinking we, we need to start giving actionable points. That's yeah, good. yeah. Great minds think alike. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, the four um, things I want to talk about uh, yeah. is to begin with confidence. Confidence is earned. Confidence is not given to you, right? Your ha- confidence is a choice. Yeah. A lot of people will make the excuse that, you know, good looking people or people who've achieved, you know, whatever in life, Elon Musk or Jeff Bezos, you, you pick a famous person, right? That, oh, they're just born with this innate confidence or they're born this way. Mm-hmm. Arguably, you can start, to, you can say, yes, they potentially had a, financial help or you know or they can they had help in some other regard to build their business empires yada yada yada. doesn't that matters but at the same time they still had the confidence in themselves to pursue whatever dream it was they had but confidence confidence is there it's yours for the taking so take get out there and grab it take ownership of it your confidence is is there waiting for you to to take it it's yours um but you have to earn it and you earn it by winning little victories over and over and over again. Yeah, yeah. And this leads me to my second point, and that is consistency. You need to be consistently confident. You need to manufacture. One of my favorite quotes is um, to have manufactured hardship. Now, I'll elaborate on that. Mm-hmm. What I mean is stuff like going to the gym. That is manufactured hardship. You didn't have to go. But because you have manufactured this unique hardship, your body's going to grow and you're going to become fitter, healthier, wiser, all that kind of thing. And apply that to your life. Where can you have manufactured hardship? Cold showers, obviously, common sense, talk to your doctor and all that. Or, or, you know, if you think you could have a bad reaction, good common sense, folks, as with all these things. I love cold showers. I get lots of health benefits from it. But that's manufactured hardship that builds up my mental fortitude and it helps build up health. But you have to do these things every day. Confidence is like any other skill. You can have skill feed. So you need to practice things daily that either build your confidence or uh, are going to, well, I say build your confidence. Either it's going to consistently build your confidence in little steps or you can take one huge leap. And that the huge leaps is where courage comes in handy. But we'll talk about that next week. So, so, so does that on. mean putting yourself in situations where you wouldn't necessarily feel confident? Yes, exactly. But you go and do. Okay. Exactly. Manufactured hardship. If you have a fear of public speaking, maybe go to, I don't know, sign up to a debate team, sign up to do public speaking. Um, you know, manufactured hardship doesn't have to be this massive, scary thing. You just need to tackle the huge you know dragon as jordan peterson would call it you know where the dragon's lair that you fear to go into that's exactly where you need to go and you need to tackle it in its lair before it comes to your village so yeah yeah instead of battling a huge dragon why not why not just do it like a video game you beat in a video game you always beat the little bosses and then you get to the big boss but by the time you've gotten to the big boss all your skills are leveled up and your confidence you're confident you can beat the big boss can't you it's like a video game Get the little wins, consistent little wins, and then before you know it, you're in a boss fight, and then, you know, and then before you know it, you've beaten the game, mm. and the game is potentially your lack of self confidence. So yeah, yeah. Um, but then with consistency, if practicing consistent confidence, you will become competent. Now, this is where you need to get uh, make it well. It can either be general, 
do you want confidence in general? Do you want to walk with your shoulders back, your head held up? Everybody, you walk into a room and people instantly, your body language screams confidence. That's a man or a woman who knows knows their worth and you you confidently stride into a room. Or if you don't have uh, good public speaking skills, then practicing confidence daily consistently in public speaking before you know it, you will be a competent public speaker and then you'll end up people like well you're actually really good at this do you mind giving the presentation or take it or actually being you know the guy who gives presentations regularly in the workplace because mm-hmm. people will see that competence they will see you know that you are bold they will see that you know your a, a natural byproduct is of um confidence is assertiveness which ties back to self-respect because you'll be assertive in healthy boundaries, assertive in what you want, clear communication because of that comes with assertiveness as well. There is a myriad of benefits yeah, yeah. with being confident. Um, mm. and, then it's, and then it comes back to being a loop. Once you become competent in a given area, your confidence will only grow from that. And it just repeats and repeats and repeats. And then before, it's like compound interest, as I said before, it will just get more and more and more. And, you know, one day, one week, one month, one year from when you start practicing this, you will be unrecognizable to not only yourself, but your your peers and sphere of influence. And mm. And ultimately, you know, the goal of a good man or woman is to serve others, isn't it? That's why we're here. Yeah. We want to serve others. And you will serve... Yeah those who depend upon you in the best possible way by being your most confident self. Yeah. 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 It's like, it's like that. uh, Don't let the lights go out episode. You are somebody's Mm. primary or emergency lighting. Like go and check out that episode and that reference will make sense. But for our consistent listeners, you'll understand that. But I feel like those are the four actionable steps. Choose to be confident, choose to start tackling the little, the little boss fights and you know, the little problems that you're not feeling confident with and slowly but surely you'll build up to the bigger ones consistently do it every single day manufacture hardship whether that's the gym public speaking or doing whatever don't sit back and be a slob and let life happen to you be intentional uh Mm. naturally what comes from confident being consistently confident is competence is you know confident competence in a given area and then you'll be confident in that area because you are competent at it. And other people will give you that credibility mm. because you are competent. You are trusted to do this skill to a certain level. And, you know, it, you just, it's runaway confidence from there. That's my take on it, Nathan. No, that's great. That's great. I wholeheartedly support this message. Um, <laughs> no, it's, it's good. I think it's the Jolly uh... Viking stamp of approval. <laughs> Yeah, no, I think it's good. And I think the other thing as well is, is like, you know, those are good actionable points, but going back again, we, and I think it's good that we repeat good messages that we've pushed out is about having that, that the tribe, the mm. people around you, because actually, like you were saying, you find someone who's, you know, they're really quiet and they don't, really, but you start talking about, um, like you said, computer science and you watch them bloom and they start to talk with confidence. Mm. That's great. So have the computer science person in your tribe, you know, have the, the woodworking person in your tribe, have this, that, and the other, all these different people, because then what you're doing is you're creating a laminated community that can deal with oh, yeah. every situation. You know, it's not that you have to be confident in a hundred percent of everything, but like are you that. confident enough that you can, you know, draw those people to you to create, you know, you look at like, you know, like we, you, you mentioned them, like people like Elon Musk and Jeff Bezos. Well, yeah, they're the front guys, but they're, there's a team, isn't there? A hundred percent. You know, there's a company of people who are making that, but they're just, they're at the front being the, the face, the public face of it. But like, you know, like, you know, create your tribe and find those people who are confident and competent in things that you're not. Yes, hundred percent. And you'd really, be confident I, and competent about something in their life, you know. Yeah, you all work together. I really, really like what you said there. I really, that's probably like one of the best things in this entire episode. You, you don't have to be confident in everything, you know. I mean, like I'm, I'm sure there's plenty of things. I'm, I'm, I, for example, I am not a confident guitar player. I'm still learning the guitar, um, but you know, I, I have plenty of musicians that I'm lucky enough to know, and. You know, I'm a confident public speaker, whereas perhaps they're not. 
And I lo- I absolutely love that, Nathan. That's an absolute gem you dropped there from this entire episode. Um, you know, and I feel like that gives you freedom as well. I think people think that conf- you have to be confident in absolutely everything. So no, you don't. I'm confident that I'm not good at certain things and I never will be. I will never be a professional footballer. I will never be in a successful rock band, yada, 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 whatever, right? And I'm okay with that. Yeah. But I'm going to be confident in harping back to the previous episodes i'm confident with my worth so i know you know unconditional self-love i'm confident yeah. with my self-respect and i'm confident i'm getting more confident every day because i manufacture hardship and i'm slowly growing to become the best man i can be so it's good yeah i i really really like that nathan you know and it talks and it's harps back to several episodes we've done about building up your tribe your coaches your mentors yeah. you know and then as a group you're all you can confidently help each other yeah, and build each other linked. up. Yeah, it's all linked. Yeah, all yeah linked. I love it. Symbiotic relationship, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah man, man. That was a powerful message. I really like that. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, so that concludes today's episode on confidence. And you can tune into next week's episode where me and Nathan will be discussing courage. Mm. And very closely linked to this topic, obviously. But I feel there are some very distinct differences that we mm. can discuss and elaborate on and talk about in our own lives and yeah thanks for tuning in again folks and nathan once again thank you very much for coming on the show thank you for having me always a pleasure